Professor Genzel, you were awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize for the discovery of a supermassive compact object at the center of our galaxy. What can we still understand by studying the supermassive black hole in the Milky Way? Well, I mean, you have to understand in science, it's often the case in the, the real big questions we have that you make progress and progress brings you to a certain step forward. Uh, but then there are more questions. And so in the case of black holes, uh, it's remarkable how many questions there are. Uh, so what we've proven, we and also the, the colleagues from radio astronomy, and if you like, also the gravitational wave community. So within a period of only five years, remark that, I mean, five years, a uh, hundred years after Einstein, we have proven that indeed the objects we've been studying really do look like, like black holes as predicted by general relativity. And we've, we've shown basically by exclusion that other possibilities are either not possible anymore or very unlikely. But that's not the end of it, because there is still the possibility that very close to the innermost region we can possibly get to, and that's called the uh, event horizon. That's the point where within which even photons cannot escape. Uh, so the best we can ever do with any kind of a direct measurement is to that point. And uh, so both the gravitational waves as well as our, our techniques are beginning to get sort of to a few times the event horizon. So the, the, it's a possibility that Einstein's theory uh, is not correct inside of that. Mm -hmm. It's similar but not fully correct. Now that is annoying to people who would like to have a simple life, but even that's, that's natural science. We have, to, we have to explore that. I'm fairly confident we will. Uh, it'll, take, it'll take some more time, more effort, but look, I've, we've, I've been at it for 40 years. Uh, I'm old, but there will be others who <laughs> will continue. Now, the next big hurdle, and that is really a big hurdle, is uh, the prediction of general relativity, that at the center of black, of black holes, all of the energy mass, it's, it's not mass as, as you might think, it's not, it's not uh, you know, rocks or something like this, it's energy really. All of the energy is contained in a point. Point meaning a mathematical point with a diameter of zero. And that means that the density is infinite. We call that a singularity. So that is a result of the, uh, you know, a, a theory of Einstein which uh, does not contain quantum mechanics. And so most physicists uh, say, well, we need to have, we need to expand Einstein's theory uh, to one which is also true on the smaller scales where quantum theory is, 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 is right. And there we know from other examples, take the atoms. Atoms were thought to be atomos by the Greeks, not dividable, right? And then uh, until, until the uh, first measurements of, the, uh, of Rutherford and others, uh, which showed that an, an atom is actually uh, a big cloud of, of electrons and inside uh, protons. And so it is dividable. And what looks like an undivisible thing uh, is divisible, uh, dividable if you have high enough uh, resolution. Then you come to the nucleus where the proton and the neutrons are, then we thought they are, uh, you know, point uh, particles. But with big accelerators, we now know, no, they are not. They are actually, they are, they are, if, you, if you have a good enough theory, then you must include the fact that a proton has a finite size. Okay, so that's a bit the same kind of suspicions. We suspect that in, 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 in gravity theory, a similar thing would happen. But how do we get in there? How do we get in there and report it to others? And that's really the, the incredible uh, thing. How will we ever make hard enough measurements so close to that we can tell and yet be able to report it? And that's just sort of frustrating if you, if you like. But it's also exciting, of course. 
What are the main challenges of astrophysics for the future? Yeah, I mean gravitation in general, as I said, is obvious and the, and the uh, evolution of the universe is clear. Uh, well, the next obvious one and the next obvious one which in fact will become available for detailed studies are the external planets, the exoplanets. There is absolutely no doubt that in the next 10-15 years we will be able in detail to look at the chemistry of the atmospheres of many many such extrasolar planets. I mean if you look at the progress in the field it's enormous. Okay. Um, so we will learn, we will learn, you know, what, what fraction of these exoplanets have, which types of, of substances in them. Um, but of course the big, the big question for everyone, for humans, is the green men. Uh, is there life? That one I, I'm much more skeptical about because what does it mean life? Uh, it, the simplest way to think about it is the telephone call. That will not take place. You know, it goes like this. Hello, here's Joe. Would you please answer? And then you wait 50 years and nothing happens. Uh, the, the remote sensing way has been tried and nothing has been found. One should tr continue, I mean, with remote sensing would be to try to, so to speak, overhear the t TV program on, on Exoplanet 16, yeah? Uh, it has been tried, but not with, without uh, success. So then finally, it's, it's a non-equilibrium chemistry. In the in the atmospheres, like in our own, right? I mean, climate uh, climate uh, uh, the, the 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 good uh, pr problem with uh, the, uh, the 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 various substances which we inject in the atmosphere. That will be done, but the question will be, for instance, if you measure the fraction of ozone in 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 one of these exoplanets, and maybe we find that the ozone fraction is high. What does it mean? Is that a sign of life, or is that a sign we don't understand the exoplanets? And I, there, I would be on the on the latter side because you know volcanism can drive the atmospheric conditions into high non-equilibrium non states. But it's going to be exciting. It's going to be wonderful for the public also because I mean people will be able to follow this very closely. As we are talking to build uh, the Einstein telescope, I would like to ask you how the study of gravitational waves uh, can help us uh, to understand new physics. Yeah, I mean, um, you said Einstein telescopes. Okay, for, first of all, I'm with you. I'm a f full fan of uh, gravitational wave research. And if I were young, if I wouldn't become a, a you know a neo scientist, I would become a, a gravitational wave physics. The only thing which is not so nice about gravitational wave astronomy is that there's so many people. I mean, as a, as a scientist, to work in a team of three thousand people is not, uh, you know, not generally. It's so, so nice. But anyhow, leave that aside. I believe it's not so much the ground-based, it's the space. So the LISA project. Why? Because the LISA project, so that, that is a project to have three satellites in, a dis, uh, in space at a distance of about two and a half million kilometers and then beaming to each other lasers such that you can see long wavelength distortions of the space-time. That allows you to measure uh, uh, the presence of very large-scale perturbations. And so that would allow you to look at the first massive black holes in the universe. That would allow you in particular also uh, to look at the classical ultimate experiment, which is the inspire of a stellar black hole into a massive black hole. Now we've seen such inspires with uh, LIGO, but of two stellar black holes into each other. And there the problem is that in the end it takes only about 0.1 second and then it's all done. And that is not enough time to, so to speak, in the innermost region to really measure the space-time. While if you have a, a stellar black hole go into a big black hole, initially this takes years, then months, then weeks, and then a few days. And that gives us enough time to measure very close to the event horizon so well, then we can ask many of these questions we discussed earlier.